All right, meets. How's it going? In today's video, it's episode 11 of Lord of the Clans by Christy Golden. Let's go! For the next several days, Thrall had a whale of a time, joining the Warsong Orcs in feasts and revelry, all the while learning a whole bunch more stuff about his people. Hellscream spoke of a time when each clan was separate unto itself, with each having their own symbols and customs, and even speech. And the Warsong Chieftain also spoke further on their spiritual leaders, called shamans, who worked with the magic of nature, not evil magic of demonic supernatural powers. Isn't magic magic? Yes and no. Sometimes the effect is the same. If a shaman was to summon lightning to strike an enemy, they'd be burned to death. If a warlock was to summon hell's flames against an enemy, they would also be burned to death. So magic is magic. But lightning is a natural phenomenon. You call it by requesting it. With Hell's Fire, we make a bargain. It costs a little. Of yourself. But you said the shamans were disappearing. Doesn't that mean the warlock's way was better? It was quicker. More effective. Or so it seemed. But there comes a time when a price must be paid. And sometimes, it is dear indeed. The conversation then turned to the peculiar lethargy, demonstrated by the vast majority of orcs. No one can explain it. But it claimed nearly all of us one by one. We thought it some kind of illness at first, but it doesn't kill. One of the orcs at the camp thought it might have something to do with... Thrall then fell silent. He certainly didn't want to say something potentially insulting. Just say it, Thrall. To do with what? With the redness of the eyes. Ah, perhaps it does at that. There is something we wrestle with that you, blue-eyed youngling, cannot possibly understand. I hope you never do. In that moment, Hellscream almost appeared small and frail, and Thrall realised he was actually quite thin for an orc. Although Thrall didn't say any of this out loud, Hellscream certainly picked up on it, simply nodding and then changing the subject. You said that one was able to rally enough to help you escape. That gives me hope. If these people could take their destinies into their own hands, I believe they would rouse themselves. But none of us have ever been in one of these accursed camps. So please... Tell me all you know, Thrall. So, Thrall went ahead and did just that. He described the camp, the orcs, the guards and security measures, all in as much detail as he could, and Hellscream listened intently. Hmm. The humans are lulled into a sense of safety by our shameful lack of honour. That could work to our advantage. It's long been a dream of mine, Thrall, to storm these wretched places and liberate those captured there. Though I fear that once the gate is down, none of them will fly to freedom. Regrettably, that seems true, and it's up to us to awaken them. I think it no accident, Thrall, that you've come at this time. Thuldan is no more. His warlocks are scattered. It's time for what we once were to re-emerge. Meanwhile... Go away. My lord, there's news. Lord Langston's here to see you. Ugh, send him in, you father of a whore. Karamin then entered the room. Yeah, wonderful news, my lord. We've had a sighting. Several leagues from the internment camp, headed due west. Some villagers were awakened when an orc tried to break into their homes. Seems it was hungry. When they surrounded it, it spoke. A few days later, one of the farmer's sons was kidnapped by a group of orcs. They took him to a cave and ordered some large orc to kill him. That orc refused and the boy was released. Yeah, and here's the kicker. The confrontation took place with the orc speaking in the human tongue, because the large orc couldn't speak any orcish. Blackmore nodded and smiled. Yeah. So, he immediately rode out to follow up on this new lead, and Teresa watched him from a window. And as she watched, she had two passionate conflicting thoughts. One, she really hoped these rumours were false, the Thrall was nowhere near wherever they were about to search for him. And two, overwhelming relief, which was the same thing she felt every time Blackmore left Dernhold Keep. She then went out for her daily stroll, letting her hair down. T'was unseemly for a woman to prance about with unbound hair, but she didn't give a shit. However, as she gleefully combed her fingers through her Goldilocks, her gaze fell upon the welts on her wrists, which she instinctively tried to cover up. But, no. This wasn't her shame to hide. She then made her way to the cave, where she'd said her farewells to Thrall, and stood in there for a bit, feeling relieved and saddened at the same time. She desperately missed Thrall, 
missed writing to him, reading his kind, wise replies. If only the rest of her people could see that the orcs were not a threat anymore. Why was it so hard to understand that with a little bit of education and respect, orcs could be valuable allies? All that money and time being poured into the internment camps. It all seemed so dumb. After a while, Teretha made her way back, and as she did, she heard a loud blow of a horn. Yeah, great. Her master was back. And in that moment, any sense of lightness and freedom immediately bled out of her. Thrall was free, but her days of slavery loomed numberless ahead of her. And back with the orcs. A word, my lord. Go on. Humans are beginning to scour the forest, led by a loud, arrogant man in green. Blackmore. Jesus, was that man ever going to piss off? As I suspected. My lord, the stranger thrall has put us all in danger. If they find our caves, they'll have us at their mercy. We'll either be killed or rounded up like sheep. Neither shall happen, Regshak. Thrall has not put us in danger. It was my decision to let him stay. Do you question that? No, my chieftain. There was an awkward silence for a brief moment. Thank you. But Rekshak is right. I should leave. I'll go and make sure I leave a trail for them to follow. One that leads them far from you and yet not to me. We need you, Thrall, to liberate our brothers in the camps. Winter is coming. It'll be hard to feed an army. And there's something else I have to do first. You said you knew my clan. The Frost Wolves. I have to find them. Only then will I be ready to stand by your side. I had hoped to go in the spring, but it seems Blackmore's forced my hand. Elscream stared for quite a while, and then nodded. You've a wise head on your shoulders. I do not know for certain where the Frost Wolves dwell, but somehow I know in my heart that you'll find them. And so, the following morning, Thrall bade a reluctant farewell to his new friends, but before he left... Here. I want you to have this. Elscream lifted a bone necklace from his own neck. These are the remains of my first kill. I've carved my symbols in them. Any orc chieftain will know them. I'll lead the humans away from them. If you don't, no matter. We'll tear them limb from limb anyway. Both orcs laughed fiercely. Classic Hellscream. And then Thrall was off, initially taking a detour, veering off towards the village that he tried to steal some food from. He then left a whole bunch of clues that would make anyone believe he'd head south afterwards including traceable footprints and a strip torn from his frost wolf swaddling cloth. And once he was satisfied, he then turned his attention towards the Ultarak Mountains. Somewhere, hidden within those jagged peaks, was the Frostwolf clan, and an answer to who he really was. <laughs>